Bueno, pues, uh, this is this is part two. This is part two. The memory was full. They said the memory was full. I haven't because I didn't use it. I only use this tablet. Um, <clears throat> I only use it when I come out because it's the only one that allow me to record more than you know. I can record two, three hours. This is the only one. And I got this in the raffle. I got this in the raffle in the program at Bronx Works. So today it is uh, June 4th, 2022. This is part two. Um, beautiful sunny day. It's like, you know, what else? What else can you ask for, right? What else can you ask for? Uh, so, um, yeah, I mean, you know, there's nothing but, you know, to feel very, very humble, very humble and grateful, very grateful to all New York taxpayers, you know, because I think it's some state money, some city money that come in, you know, uh, that allow me to live another day, that allow me to live another year, you know, this is why, you know, I mean, I mean, if you want to call it communism, okay, because that's the most famous one, you know, that people know. Uh, but I'm more like uh, communi communitarianism. Communitarianism is that we all help each other. So, I'm always going to be very grateful to New Yorkers, to this land, because. <laughs> I'm not going to say that they made me a woman because God made me a woman and I don't want you to believe that. Don't feel, don't feel, you know, from me, from me. I know there's some, you know, <laughs> terrorists that, you know, you don't believe I'm a woman, you know, I'm a write a nasty review. And I'm gonna shut down your entire business. Not, not me. I mean, if they, if we, if we was already in another place, you know, if we live in a society where we have already recognized, you know, the greatest injustice in the history of the whole planet, which is you know, stealing everything from Africa and appropriating it as if it's ours. You know, and yes, most of us, you know, I mean, we did not participate in that, but we benefit from that. And we continue perpetrating lies and say, oh, you know, Greece uh, is the mother of civilization. They stole everything from Mother Africa. You know, it's like you know the the library of uh, Alexandria. You know, I mean that right there will tell you what kind of devil they are. You know, when you got no respect and you go and you don't even care why claims why land it's known you know like here you know the Anawa this is the Anawa this is the Anawa still this is why I have two accounts on Twitter you know they call uh, decolonizer decolonizer in in my native tongue descolonizadora because it's a lot easier it is a lot easier 
to decolonize the mind, then if we go on all broken up, all beat up, you know, like and try to feel something from that, feel something from that. So there's something, you know, in Mother Africa, they call it uh, Sankofa. Sankofa. Go back and get it. No, go back and, and live in the past and stuff. Just go back and get it. So, to get what? Our culture. You know, our land. Our people. That, you know, most of the time don't even recognize the natives in this land. Not everybody was brought in. A lot of uh, people who got enslaved, they got kidnapped from Brazil, from Venezuela, from Honduras, from Mexico. It's like, why? Because, duh, divide and conquer. Divide and conquer. This way, you know, they know, you know, family is everything. They know that's the cohesiveness, that that is, um, <clears throat> let me turn this way a little bit, from both sides. <laughs> so they know that, so what they was doing, they was like, you know, moving people around. They was moving people around, so... As a result, we don't even know which way is up. We don't even know which way is up. We go like, you know. We go throughout the planet and and uh, we think uh, this is great. And uh, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. This is great for me. Like I say, you know, I got to buy my apartment already. In 1994, I bought my apartment. I bought a co-op. Life is good. You know, I'm trying, like, I have a huge one-bedroom apartment. And now, you know, I got what I came here for. <laughs> well, I just say, like, there's not even a campaign for us to get our land back. More than 60% of our land in one of the bogus uh, treaties, with, you know, validated by the bogus institutions. You know, I saw a couple of years ago they was taking some momentum, but then it died because there was some actually curiosity as to say the Vatican did not have any authority to give away this land. But here we are. A lot of people, they don't know that the Pope used to bless the ships. They used to bless the, the boats with all our kidnapped brothers from the African continent. People, they don't know that. And some people they know it and they still Catholic. They still Catholic. I mean like people like Whew, that is some kind of evil. Because when we don't know, we don't know. But what happened when we know? What happened when we know? How much stuff we know already? And we continue like like it's not. Continue like this. That shit is immoral. Um, and that makes us accomplices. We are accomplices to this greatest injustice. And, uh, you know, as you know, we know that they were taking their name away, just like ours. But over there, they got even more vicious. 
with our African brothers because we all know that you know the tree the tree that that gives the best and the most fruits is the tree that we always beating up because we want the fruits we want we want the benefits that's why our African brothers and sisters you know a lot of times you know sometimes it's impossible to talk to them they're like oh, you know, the slave master it's not too bad it's not too bad you know and especially in Latin America we see a lot you know just you know just because we already got a certain stage into into uh, into the mixing you know I mean we're still we're still mulattos I consider myself a mulatta you know just because oh I mean who decided who was an Indian and who was an African who was black right black mean black right even even like 60 years ago it was still like you got one drop one drop African that's it you're black and that's the key to understanding the stories of uh, like Italy uh, Ireland they was never never recognized as white people why because they were still very melanated they had to come through the process of you know mixing bringing all these people from outside and also pushing a lot of the foods that target our pineal gland or pituitary all the melanin production that's how that's how you we become we come out even more and more pale i've noticed a lot of you know african people here not over there not over there you know but over here you know like they lose a lot of the melanin after their their 60s their 70s and the 80s they come out like really pale why because they never care into nurturing the melanin you know and I still I talk to this about people especially you know melanated people and they go like they go like me like what are you talking about and I understand I want to say it but I don't say it I'm saying, yeah all your life you know uh, you have suffered tremendously because just because of the color of your skin so it is a curse and I have had friends I have had girlfriends you know that they tell me you know like you know I want to have your hair the color of your skin your features and it is fucked up because that's the way God made us I mean, what kind of God was going to create such a beautiful place, you know, with everything, you know, and we know, we know now that everything, everything that we see is based in the sun. The sun impregnates the earth, you know, Pachamama, and, you know, through the air, we able to enjoy you know everything that the sun all the goodness of the sun right the minerals all the stuff it come because of the soil you get activated it's always what I've been saying we are in a binary this is a binary system so this is what they say oh you know transgender and, you know because they don't like transsexual you know uh, you know, there's a million genders and blah blah blah. How? How? There's only magnet, magnetism, and electricity. 
And that's how everything worked. That's how everything worked. Like in, in numerology. In numerology, they're able to, to identify even the gender of the unborn, unborn because of the numbers. You know, obviously the zero. Every time you see like a zero, and every time you see like a one, the zero obviously is feminine energy. One is masculine energy. Everything, everything you go, you know. We have the sun and the moon. We got fire, we got water. We got like, you know, everything is a balance. It's all about the balance. You know, I've known this for decades. And nobody got any interest. Nobody got any interest, you know. You see households with, with only women. You know, even households with only men. It's like, I mean, you gotta be aware. You gotta be aware that you're limping. That you are not in harmony. You are not, you know, it's not the ideal state. It's not the ideal state for, for, for anybody, for anybody, you know. As much as they say, you know, uh, you know, the Amazons and all this stuff, you know, like, there's no harmony, there's no balance. You know, I was like, um, I was talking in a space the other day about the principles, the principles of Ma'at, right? Which is the the feminine, the divine feminine with uh, with a feather and the scale, right? And the wings. So that's where they took that idea of uh, justice. You know, they blindfold it, put a scale, whatever, you know. But um, that's just like whatever suit their agenda. You know, the invaders. So your heart got weighted on that scale against that feather. And you see over here in the Anahuac, you know, a lot of natives, the original nations, they used the feather too because they knew about the principle that our heart, you know, ideally our heart, you know, is the best when it's light as a feather, light as a feather. So there was, you know, once we started our journey into the fifth dimension, we have the, <laughs> we know, uh, the, oh my God, Anubis in Kemet, in the Anahuac, we had the, you know, the symbol of the Solo Squintle, the so Solotl Squintle, but uh, the, the ones who, who guide us, right, in the afterlife. And, that's where it guide us to. That's where it guide us to. So, I mean, and that was the only thing. That was the only thing that, you know, not complicated. You know, that, you know, is my heart as light as a feather? Or is it my heart all full with all these emotions, all this clutter? all this stuff and that makes perfect sense because you know in the fifth dimension I mean like you don't need all that we don't need uh, anything and right now very few people are preparing themselves for the afterlife it's not just that recognize, you know, such and such as your such and such. It's about us, all, all of us doing the work. All about of us networking. You know, we don't network 
so to speak. I mean, we got to the Western term. But, you know, I use it because it's like people know it already. You know, you network and the same people are the ones who are going to help us in our journey, you know, in the afterlife. You know, this is why, you know, I tell my dad, he died last year, you know, if I can help him, you know, but sometimes I have dinner. If you have dinner, it's a lot harder to listen to our ancestors, right? Which they talk to us in, in our dreams. They communicate. Sometimes it's not talk. There's other ways of communication. But they need us, and we need them. And we need them. Because they are our only way. Our only way to God is through our ancestors. And they are the ones who are the most invested in us, you know. I mean, I'm talking about my case, you know. Winning, winning, getting better, uh, achieving certain uh, standards. The lineage, the line, the lineage matter a lot. Not the way that, you know, the whatever, the Wazungu made it about, you know, oh, my lineage, this is it, and it gotta be, all my lineage gotta be like this, <laughs> you know, like, how stupid is that, you know? But our lineage is, 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 uh, is our connection. It's our connections to the spiritual realm that, you know, we all going to... Because when you have that, we're part of a certain lineage, communication is a lot easier. We have every family, we got a certain things that we talk. We sometimes talk. Yeah, all the families, they don't understand what we're talking about. Because in our families, it's like, you know, we have had references and stuff. And, you know, I mean, it's, it's a lot more complicated than that, but... This is just one of many, many reasons why, um, you know, mixing with, um, mutations it's not conducive it's actually uh, destructive destructive I have been in um, in um, chat rooms and stuff you know people ask those questions you know I have some ancestors you know? <laughs> but we, we forget they don't got soul we don't have, they don't have soul. You know, we see our African brothers and sisters, you know, we say they got a lot of soul. They move with the music completely and they, you know, they become the music, which is the only way to learn. That is the only way to learn. I would say that's like the second biggest scam they pull out saying that if you read books you're gonna learn no. the only way of learning is to becoming it you gotta become it you gotta experience yourself like you can study the birds all you want you know like, like the bird watchers you know there was one in Central Park <laughs> You know, that, that, you know, this uh, Karen called the police and she kept saying, you know, you know, he's very tall and he's black. <laughs> you got to come over here soon. Basically, she wanted to say, you got to come here armed, you know. And she just like was being Becky. Becky was just being Becky, right? But him 
he said he was a bird watcher. Yeah, right. And sure enough, he withdrew all the charges and let Becky go. Even when everybody, any lawyer say, you know, he got a case, he had a case. But what happened was that Becky was like, here, you know. It's ridiculous, it's ridiculous, you know. I, and I knew that was gonna happen. I knew that was gonna happen. There's no way Becky is gonna be reprimanded, you know, because of uh, being so racist. I mean, honestly, it turned out to be gay. Like, is there like, you know, like, not, not to say that there's harmless, but there's other kinds of harm. Like we saw uh, J. Edgar Hoover, right? <laughs> let, let me just fix this. I'm not, I'm not fixing, but I'm just gonna put it on the other side of the railing, this plane. So they don't say that it's bothering them. Everything bothered them. So, um, <sighs> yeah, I think I'm ready to go back home. I'm pushing it. I didn't think I was gonna. Well, I also had like a couple of days that I wasn't able to sleep. You know, <laughs> you know I've been, I've been enjoying the the spaces. Is this recording? Yeah, I've been enjoying the spaces on 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 Twitter. You know, just talking to my people, it just feels so good. And, uh, well, last night I had to leave. Well, actually it was this morning because I woke up at 3, it was like 3.30 in the morning. But they don't sleep. They stay up all night. Sometimes. So, I saw this and there's this Chilean um, guy. Oh my God, what a pest. I'm trying to pontificate. And I put him in his place the last time, you know, that I, that I saw him. Like, you know, come on. Oh, because he was praising uh, Perón. He was praising the, you know, the ex-president of Argentina, Juan Domingo Perón. You know, and I didn't say much, but he said like, you know, come on. I said, come on, you know. Perón was the protege of Francisco Franco, I say, I don't need to say more. Do I need to say more? And he was like, quiet. <laughs> he got quiet. He got the freaking nerve, you know, to, to come out. Shit, at 3.30 in the morning. 3.30 in the morning, he pop up. It's like actually at 4 in the morning. He pop up. I say, I'm out of here, and I say, why? And I say, why? You got, you know, you don't have to make a decision because I'm going to make that decision for you. I refuse to. And last week the same thing happened. Some Spaniard joined. I was like, are you serious? You were talking about important shit and like these people are like taking note. I'm like, I don't, I don't know. This is why some people they say that we should be moving to Telegram. But on Telegram, you know, they need to link up some social media account because there's no way that sometimes you can have like talking, talking. You want to see their social media, what they're about. Because, you know, I mean, I can read between the lines. If they post about something, you know, whatever, it's like, and especially the most important thing is what they don't post about, what they don't comment about. You go like, you know, and you come to a leftist 
space. I mean, I, I one time I, I joined this space, the, you know, they had like millennials. And the administrator, the first thing you see on his Twitter account is calling uh, President AMLO, he was calling him names. So, I don't know. I don't know. So, actually, actually, I, I got to see um, last night uh, this video of uh, this guy from, he's from my, a neighboring state in Mexico. He's a journalist. He always like talking about how he's a journalist. And, you know, he's infallible because he's a journalist. And I was like, I just watch a little bit, you know, I, I skip, you know, because I don't, I don't have the patience. Once you're, I already noticed that if your most important thing is your career, you know, your branding, you know, like, I'm like, okay. And sure enough, you know, I skip and he say, oh, the president, even the president got tired of his narrative. Blah, 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 blah. And then you skip it like five minutes later. And he's very sick about who's gonna continue the vision of our president. You know, the fourth transformation of the nation. I was like, well, this is what a demagogue is about, right? They got a little bit for the Nazis, a little bit for the people, a little bit for the feminists. You know, they wanna, they want everybody to love them because that's how sick they are. I'm like, I was like, <laughs> are you serious? I mean, like, I don't know if I'm gonna make a little tape, uh, I mean, a little video. But the problem is that Twitter don't allow me to put no more videos on it. It takes like three hours if they uh, upload the video. They're like, wow. This is, they're very like paranoid. They don't allow, you know, nothing. So, um, where was I? Yeah, <laughs> I mean that. That level of uh, psychopathic fantasies, you know. He's a white again. He's a white again. All his family is like, they got politicians coming from that family and not good. Not good, but it's just like, that's the world that we live in. And it don't even matter why, because, you know, there's people like they have come out and like to say, hey, you know, this person is full of it. And here are the receipts, you know, because, you know, I like to, I took uh, screenshots of their tweets, you know, talking shit and then like they're talking shit about something. This is what we le learn from the slave master. So talking shit against something and three, five months later, they become the, the spokesperson for that, you know, cause or, or for, you know, like for our president. There's this Arab woman, only in 2017, you know, we got all the screenshots. You know, talking shit uh, against President AMLO, and now she's like the reference for the left. I'm mean, like, how the hell is that possible? With only in 2017, she was calling our president, or well, today's president, this, this, and that. We got a lot of tweets from 2017 because they wasn't expecting us to win. They wasn't expecting the people to win this time. They thought it was gonna be, you know, 
more of the same. So, so we gotta tell our slave master that we are with them. But I'm glad because I didn't even I missed some of those tweets. I'm glad that people had the, the screenshots. You know, but we have become a psychopathic society. You know, we, people making videos today about, you know, such and such, crying. And next year, they're like, well, wait a minute, wasn't you like, you, 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 you know, the spokeswoman, the spokesman for, for this person or for that cause? Oh yeah, but now I got some... I got some money, or I have some hope of getting some money. Sometimes they don't even get the money. But they are hoping the slave master will, will recognize them and get discovered the same way they discover the Americas, I guess. I don't know. And it's crazy what people are willing to do just for a possibility a possibility of um, you know being able to get into certain spaces or being able to you know it's a uh, this disgusting it is disgusting and the good part is that a lot of times you know these politicians or you know whatever NGOs or whatever nonprofits they only you know they say oh yes yes you're gonna get a check keep it up keep it up beat them up beat them up beat them up beat them up and they might give them like a check you know whatever or you know like five hundred dollars or whatever and that's it and oh yes and like you know we promise that you're gonna be in because we like your work or whatever we like the way you unbelievable unbelievable and actually um, when we started talking about this woman this journalist this Arab journalist uh, the host of that space it was like I was there for like three hours and Every time somebody spoke, uh, every two people he spoke, he will come back and defend this woman. And I was looking at his picture and I'm like, yeah, you know, they're both uh, Arabs because we look a lot alike. We look a lot alike. You know the, the mulattoes in the uh, Arabic Peninsula, Arabic Peninsula, because over there is not Africa. I don't want you to think that's Africa. That's the Arabic Peninsula. We look a lot alike. So in the Anahuac, there's a lot of people. You know, they just like you think it's like. And I've been meaning to ask people, you know, like who is this guy? And the worst part is that he was talking about that, oh, you know, you know, kind of like Amazing Grace, that he just, you know, he just learned the truth, and now he became a leftist. And I was telling him, you know, because of that, you need to be a little bit more humble. If you became a leftist yesterday, great. That is great. But you still have to, because in that room, there was people who have had to leave the country. You know, they, they was there were some that that they was uh, founder founders of some of the chapters of the communist party in Mexico, and they had to leave the country. You know, some of them they lost family members. You know, because they wasn't able to get rid of them. They say, you know, well, they're cowards, they're cowards. You know, the first thing they do, they come for your family. 
you know, and uh, and I say, okay, so let me guess. Two years ago, you just found out that that you identify with the people, and now, I mean, like, I haven't seen him. I haven't seen him. I think he blocked me or something. But um, I'm gonna ask, who's this guy? Who's this guy? Because you know, we was telling you all this shit this female journalist have been doing, and oh, that's misogyny. How oh, that shit is misogyny when we're speaking the truth. You know this B. Hatch. She got the nerve to call our president a, you know, N A R C O. Are you serious? They've looked, they've looked our president, even, even underneath the, the nails. They looked everywhere. You know when they start attacking the president? This is the recording, yeah. He go and empty his pockets. He don't even carry a wallet. He don't got a wallet. He say, I don't have a bank account. You know, my wife, she handle, he write books. That's how he live, he write books. Actually, one of the so-called journalists in the press conference, she said, oh, what are you gonna do with the profits of your books? Like, Oh, those are the profits from his books. <laughs> Even though, you know, he had given millions of pesos to the people, especially after the last earthquake in 2017, there was an earthquake, and he gave millions from his profits from his books. He gave it to the to the to the survivors to the ones, you know, the, the people who got really affected. Because the way the government was before was that, there we go again, and helicopters. The way it was before, it was the government, you know, if there was a hurricane, an earthquake, that was an opportunity for them to steal to their pockets to put it in their pocket and sure enough they tried to to incarcerate the president saying that oh you know that money was like you know no 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 that money is right there it came from the sales of my books those millions of pesos I gave to the to the people survivors of the earthquake and I gave it to them and they still want to put him in jail for giving from his pocket it's just like shameless shameless and they say they're christians i mean you know i wouldn't mind you know the politicians are politicians but the ones who vote for these politicians they cannot call themselves christian because we have exhibit them we have exhibit all the politicians you know we say like hey you know they got these properties and these properties and they give their, their mother and their grandmother, they give properties. You know, we have unmasked them. And like, oh no, I hear no evil, I see no evil. And then you go to church? How are you gonna go to church? Oh, that's right. When they was in, in office, you did not have to pay taxes. You did not even have to pay electricity or water, nothing, right? All you gotta do is just give them your voting card. You give your voting card and that's it. That was the old days. They kept us, they kept us in hell for 70 years, seven decades. We got puppets. The first time we don't get it, they make up shit. They just make it up. They make up shit. 
Anyway, I'm gonna start heading home because for my first outing to the Bronx, <laughs> I don't want to get overextended. Although I feel like I want to stay here until tomorrow, but because of the sun is so nice. But I better start heading home later. Thank you, thank you, Tata. Thank you, Tonansen. Thank you, New Yorkers from New York State, from New York City. Thank you to the people. I am here because of you too. Later. It was funny, I'm just gonna say one thing. You know, my neighbor invited me to live in his building. You know, he got shady, of course he's gay, you know. He don't talk to me no more. He made faces the last time. I haven't talked to him like in three years. I might run into him and he go like, um, but I remember he said, 